and hello again and welcome to the next video about my guzzy and since the last video I made there's not been much progress however this week I think things should start to move forward a bit because I've got a few deliveries due and in fact the first one has just arrived today so uh, let's open it up it's quite a big parcel for a small part but never mind let's see what's in here um, hope it's the right part anyway let's have a look yeah one box and what's in here hopefully is a switch unit yeah from Multi Gadget the same as I fitted to my left hand bar and this one is due to go on the right hand bar and the reason for that is so that I can have indicators um, I've got switches there for the indicators and also got a spare one which I might use for say um, I don't know an engine kill switch or something like that so that's great that's the first part arrived and now I've got to fit that to the clip on just the same way as I did the last time which I showed you the process for uh, in a previous video however just in case you forget um, these switches which I like have the wiring built in and therefore therefore you have to drill the bars to pass that wire through the inside of the bars and out again and that's fine by me because I did buy some switches a while ago which didn't have the wiring complete and it was a bit of a nightmare to try and solder everything in place with such small wires so I'm quite happy to use these and therefore therefore I've marked out I made a start to mark out where those um, holes have to be I'll shoot one here and one to the exit and uh, the first thing I actually had a problem with was because I couldn't use my throttle on these clip-ons because it had this kind of um, grip on it with no hole in the end, a bit of a pain. So I had to buy a new pair from Renthal, which had just arrived. So now obviously I can get that where it needs to be. Um, yeah, so as I say, I've just got to now mark out and drill these holes, pass the wires through, and it can go back on the bike. So that's great. Um, now I won't show you that because as I say, I've filmed that uh, process before, it's pretty boring. So we'll leave that for the time being, move it away. However, last week I was quite busy because I was trying to make a little mount for my lovely new aluminium swing arm. Let me just, uh, can I go back a bit here? Let me look. No, I can't. That's as close as we can get. But yeah, there it is. Beautiful thing. So that can go back over there. And I made a start at the usual back of the envelope diagram of what I wanted to do. I went away to workshop and started to make it. And this is start to it here. And I thought, hang on a minute, this looks a bit too small. I think I made a mistake somewhere. So I brought it back home again, and sure enough, I misread my own handwriting. I thought I wrote 165, I didn't, I wrote 185, and therefore this is no good to me, so I've got to start again. But no matter, that's now in progress. And now here we are, an hour later, and I've drilled the clip on, passed through the wire, and now I've got that M switch mounted. Now, looking at this in use, of course, you've got this big block in the way, so using these small button switches isn't going to be too easy. So I think what I'll do is when I wire up the bike, I'll make these switches, uh, let's see, start the bike, the horn, and maybe the kill switch. Things I don't need to use um, too often on a ride anyway. And then the other three switches under the bar can be used for indicators and lights. So I think uh, that's what I'll do. And because the air unit is so flexible, that's really simple to do. I've just got to plug in the appropriate wire in the appropriate socket on the M unit and uh, away you go. So yeah, that's great. Let's get that now back on the bike and we can move on to something else. And so now we have the clip-ons back on the bike with the new rental grips and the M switches in place. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I would like, however, one day to change the brake side of things for one with a built-in reservoir because I think this separate little dash pot here looks a bit out of place on this kind of late 70s, early 80s style bike of mine. Yeah, but overall, I'm pretty happy with that. And now um, what I've got to do is work out where the wire's gonna go, feed them all through into the tank, nice and neat, and get plugged in to the M unit. And now, moving from the front of the bike to the back of the bike, my next big change to make is to these shocks here. These are YSS shocks, and I want to replace them with some with firmer springs, a longer length, and also adjustable damping. Now we've looked around the internet for quite a while now. I've hopefully found the right set for the bike and they're being made right now in the UK and they should be due, I don't know, maybe the end of this week. Now the reason why I want longer length shocks is to give me the clearance I need between the tyre and this new rather nice seat unit. 
Now, admittedly, right now it's just sitting on the frame rails, it's not mounted correctly, so it will be quite a bit higher than this when it's mounted correctly, but even that, I don't think, is quite enough. So what I needed was some shocks that may be 25 or even 30 mil longer than these. I'm going to say I've found them and they're on the way. I won't tell you what they are yet because we, that can wait until they arrive and we can do a little unboxing and then we can get them on the bike and see how they look. And next here we see the Guzzi wiring diagram that I drew up more than a year ago now because it's got February 2019 on the top there. So it has been a long time just sitting around uh, waiting for me to get back to this thing. Now there are good reasons for that which you won't go into but given we're now in this um, coronavirus lockdown I thought it's a good time to study this again and perhaps redraw it all because it's changed a little bit since I drew it out and then make a start on the wiring of the bike and today what I'm going to concentrate on is this bit over here you see that and that's the idiot light cluster which is this thing here it's got just um, four lights on it neutral indicators oil uh, and high beam so I actually had a problem with this because the damn lights wouldn't work the balls were loose inside here but hopefully I've now got that sorted out and uh, yeah I've got all the wiring is now correct the colors are correct so I can go back on the bike and then I can work out the length of wires I need to go from this lot to the rest of the bike including the M unit uh, now originally I was going to use a plastic multi-pin plug I've got a few of those but honestly they're such a pain to use a pain to um, fix the wiring and so on and also when you finish them they're quite bulky and they're hard so if you have it against uh, the, the frame the powder coat and so on it'll just fret away and it's not ideal so actually I do prefer to use these rather old-fashioned bullet connectors they've got um, built-in covers there look clear covers so they're a bit easier to package and you can just squish them all up like that and they'll fit in a little small gap unlike a big fat and multi-pin plug so yeah that can go back on now and in fact here I've dug out this collection of you see that yeah this collection of uh, nuts and bolts and whatever I don't even remember what they're for to be honest it's been so long ago uh, but I do know this thing here that's going to have to go something like that uh, and it bolts to the headstock and the reason for that is because without it this protrudes up far too high compared to the rest of the uh, instruments and the controls in that area so it just looks a bit odd so we made this long spacer to uh, push it down a wee bit and get it all lined up anyway that done let's go and get that on the bike and see how it looks and now looking from the front of the bike you can perhaps see why i needed that long spacer right there because without it this idiot light pod would be sticking up a good three inches about here which is not good at all it would look very odd so now it's all aligned with the speedo and the ignition key. But now the hard work begins of completing the wiring harness. So step one is going to be to remove this big old aluminium tank and put it somewhere safe yet again. And yeah, then we'll begin. And now here we are a week later and this parcel just arrived. I was actually quite surprised because it had been delayed due to all the problems with distribution and so on and supply chain. So I was not expecting it anytime soon, but here it is, and these are my new shocks for the Guzzi. As you see, they're from Hagon, a British company, and these were made for me, or rather for the bike, in that um, we specified or agreed the weight of the bike, my weight, the length of the shocks and so on, before they were built and sent to me. So yeah, pretty good. Now, they're about... 300 and uh, I think 300 and something pounds on the website but when you're adding the VAT they come to pretty much 400 pounds but you do get free UPS delivery for that and what these are are called nitros and they are made from stainless steel complete so stainless steel uh, spring in my case I had it um, powder coated black and the main core is, of, is also stainless steel and then these parts here are aluminium and you can choose what colour you want them. You can have black, I think you can have red and blue and yellow and gold and whatever. I just went for quite simple stuff, just anodise it, clear silver. So yeah, there is one issue with them though, and that is they're quite fat. A lot fatter than standard set of shocks anyway. Um, and there was some discussion between me and the sales team, actually ended up sending them photographs of the bike 
and they said, well, you know, it looks like it'll fit, but you may have an issue because these go this way round, and, and the distance between the eyelet and this spring here is quite short. Um, obviously, there's the adjuster nut there for the damping, and you might have an issue with clearance between this and your uh, exhaust pipe. I said, no problem, no problem, because I can make a, a slightly longer spacer for the exhaust pipe if needed. Um, or rather sound, so I should say. Yeah, so now I need to go and try these out on the bike and we'll see if they fit okay. I mean, they will fit okay, but as I say, I may just have to make a spacer a little bit longer. But before these go on the bike, I just wanted to compare them with the original YSS shocks. And as you can see, these are a lot longer and also a lot fatter, the bodies are a lot fatter. And the main problem I might have is that down here, this is where the silencer is. And as you can see, they're a lot fatter in this area here because the spring goes all the way down. And it could just be that this spring will hit the silencer. But if it does, then I'll just have to make a longer spacer for that silencer when it attaches to the bike. So not really a big problem. And now here we are at the bike with a quick test fit. And sure enough, just as the sales team at Hagon warned me, these new fatter springs are down close to this silencer. And I said to them at the time, don't worry, I can also move out the silencer, which I think I'll have to do because there's about a millimetre gap here, not very much at all. But that's not really a big problem because I've just got to make a spacer here, about two or three mil thicker, and that will move out the silencer just enough. On the other side, I don't have such problems because there's plenty of room there. And now here's the seat on the bike at last. And looking at this, I've got plenty of clearance between the tyre and the underside of the seat. Although to be fair, the seat is currently being propped up by a block of wood underneath here. And that's because the final mounts haven't been made yet. I've designed them, I've made a start, but I can't finish them because I don't want to go to various workshops around town with the current situation, um, the current coronavirus. So I don't want to risk picking anything up or indeed giving it anybody else if need be. So that will have to wait, as indeed will making the spaces for the silencers. Right now they're just been packed out with, with some washers for the time being. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I was a bit concerned that these shocks would look a little bit too fat, a bit too chunky on an old bike like mine, but no, I think it actually looked pretty damn nice. I think maybe had I gone for polished stainless steel springs, because these springs are made from stainless steel, it would be a lot brighter, a lot more in your face. But with this um, option of the powder coated black, I think that suits the bike a lot better. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me just take that off there. And there's that block of wood. We'll get rid of that. And so this tank can be removed off the bike yet again, so I can get on with the wiring. But that'll have to be another video, because this one's getting quite long now, and God knows how long it'll take me to get all that wiring finished. So for now then, thanks for watching, and cheers.